Hey there, everyone. I'm Walter Benaziak. I'm Heather Roos. And I'm Ayanna Wade. And this is Top 5. Last week, we covered the Top 5 Best David Tennant episodes. It's finally time for Matt Smith, because bow ties are cool. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> and glasses are cool. Well, yeah. <laughs> and fish fingers and custard are cool. I mean... Fezzes are cool. No, you know what? No, not everything is cool, okay? What? If everything starts Gosh, being cool, what then like nothing can be You know, okay, guys, guys, hey, 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 hey. If we keep arguing like this, we're not going to do any more Doctor Who Top 5s, all right? Matt Smith portrayed the 11th Doctor over three seasons and seven specials. The 50th anniversary of the show occurred during Smith's run. To celebrate the occasion, there was a special that aired called The Day of the Doctor. It featured the return of Tennant, as well as appearances by future Doctor, Peter Capaldi, and fourth Doctor, Tom Baker. John Hurt also played the role of the War Doctor. Since this was a special episode and involved a great number of different Doctors, it was not included in our countdown. Though it is a must-see for any Who fan. During the 11th Doctor's tenure, we had some wonderful companions and great returns of classic monsters like the Weeping Angels, Daleks, Cybermen, and the Silence. What's the Silence? Wait till we get to the countdown, and you'll find out. These are the top five best 11th Doctor episodes. Number five, Day of the Moon. Doctor Who has many interesting and kind of scary villains, but my personal favorites are the Silence. The Silence are a group of aliens that have been on Earth since humans invented the wheel. Anyone who sees them immediately forgets about them the moment they turn away. They can also use a kind of hypnotic suggestion to make people do what they want. In the episode, the Doctor and his friends are in America in the year 1969, when they discover that the world is overrun with the Silence. They try to combat the effects of the Silence by making tick marks on their bodies to count how many there are, as well as use a recording device in their hands to leave messages to themselves about the aliens. Eventually, the Doctor teams up with a member of the FBI to take the Silence down in a plan that involves the moon landing. There are many wonderful moments that show off the acting chops of the cast. She can always hear me, Doctor. Always. Wherever she is, and she always knows that I am coming for her. Do you understand me? Always. It's also downright creepy at times, at least to me. This episode is also a great period piece. I loved their portrayal of President Nixon. It was just the right amount of caricature and real character. On behalf of the American people, I thank you. Number four, Crimson Horror. In the suspiciously perfect town of Sweetville, people are turning up dead and red. This episode, written by Mark Gaddis, refers to these mysterious casualties as the Crimson Horror. When a man comes to investigate the untimely death of his brother, a photo of the doctor shows up suggesting he's in mortal peril and that the factory town is not what it seems. As we search for the fate of the Doctor, we follow the Sherlock Holmes-esque investigations of Madame Vastra, a lizard woman from the dawn of time, and her wife, Jenny, and their Suntaran cohort, Strax. Unfortunately, they are trailing the previous investigations of the Doctor and Clara, whose whereabouts are unknown after a waxy preservation process. Doctor and Mrs. Smith. Oh, yes. You'll do very nicely. Oh, grand. Smashing. Hey, the Mrs. and I couldn't be more chuffed, could we, love? <laughs> I will argue this episode is one of the better examples of why the Doctor is better in a team rather than wandering across time and space alone. This Victorian story features amazing costumes, including my favorite ahistorical look from Jenny, which makes no sense, but I don't even care because she's such a badass. The botched red crimson victims and its trial testing brings up an interesting rebuttal against the old saying, blood is thicker than water. Number three, the 11th hour. This is the episode that introduces us to Matt Smith's doctor, and I was hooked from the start. The episode begins with the doctor and the TARDIS plummeting through England before crash landing on the lawn of a young girl, Amelia Pond. Amelia has a crack in time and space in her wall through which a mysterious voice can be heard saying, Listen, a zero has escaped. 
Prisoner Zero. Prisoner Zero has escaped. The doctor heads back to the TARDIS to fix the crack and tells Amelia to wait five minutes. He then returns 12 years later to find a grown up Amelia who now goes by Amy. The crack is still there, though, and Amy and the doctor must find the mysterious Prisoner Zero before the prison guards destroy the whole planet. This episode is a wonderful introduction to not only Smith's interpretation of the Doctor, but also the series as a whole. There's a lot of exposition, reoccurring tech, and time travel basics explained in an easy to understand way. Plus, we are introduced to the Doctor's companion, Amy, right away. The episode gives audiences a great feel for the dynamic that the two of them will have and build throughout the seasons. Many of Smith's trademark phrases and characteristics are well established, making him an immediately likable character. Including the bow tie. Yeah, it's cool. Bow ties are cool. Jaira! It's accessible and fun for all. Check it out, even if you're new to Who. Number two Asylum of the Daleks. The Daleks are the sworn enemies of the Time Lords, so what would make them kidnap the Doctor to help? Is you. For centuries, the Daleks have been putting all the broken and insane of their kind in an asylum. The asylum is protected by an impenetrable shield. However, a ship called the Alaska has crashed onto the planet, and now a mysterious transmission is coming from the heart of the asylum. If something can get in, that means that there may be a way for the inmates to escape, and no one would be able to stop a fleet of insane Dalek, not even the Daleks themselves. None of the Dalek are brave enough to go down to the asylum, so they capture the Doctor, Amy, and Rory to go do the dirty work. There are many interesting conflicts that are also a part of the episode. Amy and Rory are in the middle of relationship issues and have some really heart-wrenching scenes. I didn't kick you out. I gave you up. Amy. The main conflict revolves around a woman, Oswin Oswald, who was on the Alaska. Throughout the course of the episode, it is revealed that she has been transformed into a Dalek. The Doctor helps her come to this realization, and she struggles with whether she is truly a Dalek or a human. I am Oswin Oswald. I fought the Daleks, and I am... Human! Remember me. Oswin is played by Jenna Coleman, who later becomes the Doctor's companion, but as Clara, not Oswin. It's swibbly, wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. She does a wonderful job playing the character and really helps elevate the episode. And the number one best 11th Doctor episode is... Vincent and the Doctor. Have you ever looked at Van Gogh's paintings and thought, how could this man have ever been considered a failure during his lifetime? Well, you're certainly not alone. Written by Richard Curtis, this story starts at the Van Gogh exhibit at the Musée d'Orsay in current day Paris, where the Doctor notices a horrid face in one of his paintings. Traveling back to the time when Van Gogh painted the piece, the Doctor and Amy befriend the unsuspecting artist. Unfortunately, they run into the terrible creature faster than they expect. And to make matters worse, it's invisible to all except Vincent. Fortunately, the Doctor has a mirror gadget that's able to identify the monster, and the unlikely trio band together to defeat the unseen beast. This episode takes place after a certain spoiler-containing incident, so Rory is not coming along for the ride. But Amy and Vincent make a fast connection over mutual ginge and sadness. Amy happens to be my favorite companion, and I enjoy the historical episodes where it feels like you're learning in a fun way. Casting for Vincent is incredibly spot on, and from costumes to set dressing, this episode really feels like you stepped out of the TARDIS and into 1890s France. There are references to the real Van Gogh paintings, and then some places where they took a little creative license, making it an enjoyable watch for all those post-impressionist fans or art history buffs. Spoilers ahead! My favorite moment in this episode is when the Doctor and Amy take Vincent back to modern-day Paris to hear the museum curator speak kindly of the incredible magic of Van Gogh's work. It will never stop making me sob immediately. The story beautifully touches on mental health and the tragic real-life struggles Vincent faced. Sometimes the monsters in our head 
are harder to face than the ones right in front of us. The good things don't always soften the bad things, but vice versa, the bad things don't necessarily spoil the good things or make them unimportant. We want to hear what you guys think. What's your favorite 11th Doctor episode? What do you want to see us cover next on the show? Leave a comment and let us know. To keep in touch, you could like my Facebook page or follow along on Twitter. And you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or you can subscribe to my animated movie review series, Multiplex 10, here. And you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, or Twitch, where I stream on Wednesday nights. We'll catch you right back here next week with a brand new episode of Top 5 as we kick off October Top 5 2018. Walter, what is going on with you right now? Are you okay? What are you talking about? I just wrapped up the show. Uh, here, look. Oh, what the, what? Yeah, I, oh! <laughs> 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 <laughs>